Strange, but true stories. Tales from the light side, the dark side, and the other side. I'm Steve White. Well, it's that time of year again, when we carve up some pumpkins, decorate our house with ghosts and goblins and spiders, and buy all the Reese's cups at the grocery stores for the, um, uh, we, we buy them for the trick-or-treaters. That's why we buy all the Reese's cups. It's also a time that we talk about witches, right? Yeah, today we have two stories sent to us by viewers about some strange occurrences in their lives that they claim they can trace back to witches and witchcraft. I'm a mechanic, and I spend my days working on cars and listening to videos like yours, which help me focus on my work. Sidebar, thank you, my friend. Here's a story I was told a long time ago by my parents. It involves my grandparents on my father's side, and it's a battle between good and bad witches. Had these events not unfolded as they did, I would not be here typing this for you today. In fact, neither would my father. So, a few years before my father was born in the early 60s in Mexico, there were a lot of feuds or altercations between families that were handled in a brutal manner. My grandpa, for example, took part in several machete duels with men who threatened him. If a man had an issue with him and my grandpa was unable to talk things out, well, they'd agree on a time, usually early in the morning, and meet way out in the middle of a field or somewhere remote, and they just have it out. I'm getting a little off topic, but it helps to know that, so the story I'm going to tell makes a little more sense. My grandparents had met, fallen in love with each other, and gotten married. My father says my grandparents got married really young, and as it was the tradition of the girl running away with her boyfriend or the boyfriend stealing the woman away, my grandparents found themselves without much money or a roof over their head when they started out. My dad told me they spent their first night as a married couple in a horse stable. My grandparents worked hard and eventually worked their way up to owning a little piece of land and my grandpa built them their own house. Everything seemed to be going well for them. But there were a few who did not like the fact that they were doing so well together. This came to be painfully clear when, seemingly out of the blue, my grandma fell ill. My grandpa took her to many doctors, but none could figure out what was wrong with my grandma. She couldn't eat, she couldn't sleep, and she hurt all over. And most concerning of all, she told him constantly that someone or something was outside, lurking. My grandpa was desperate to save his wife from dying, but he had run out of all the options. Friends and family suggested something a bit unconventional, but he finally gave in to the idea of taking my grandma off to a witch doctor that lived in the next town over. Now, the typical picture of the run-of-the-mill witch is a grotesque woman dressed in black, rides around on a broomstick, is pedestrian compared to what a witch is in Mexican culture. It is way creepier. According to my grandpa, who claimed to have seen several witches throughout his life, he says that they look just like you and me. They're normal, regular-looking people. But when they transform into their true form, they show what they are really like and who they really are. So, now... Stay with me here because we have to get through this truly hard-to-believe piece to get to the other side and the end of their story. So, according to my grandpa, a witch will remove her legs, usually from the knee down, throw her limbs into an enchanted fire that they must make to maintain her limbs while she is off doing whatever it is witches do. And then, and only then, are they able to fly. <laughs> I remember laughing at my father when he told me that fire comes out of their stubs and propel them into the sky, and that's how witches fly. <laughs> but I stopped laughing when I noticed my father next to him had this I don't know, deer caught in headlights look. A small tangent here. During his teenage years, my dad was a real ladies' man coming home at all hours of the night, and he said many nights he'd see what he called 
fireballs in the sky flying far off in the mountains. He didn't know what he had seen until he asked my grandma about it, and she warned him that if he ever saw that, to run as fast as he could and to stay within the lights wherever possible. So, anyway, I refused to believe what sounded to me like nonsense until my father told me of a friend of his who, after noticing his wife acting strange and always being tired during the day and even sensitive to sunlight, was found to be laying in bed. The husband asked his wife what was wrong, and when she refused to get out of bed, he pulled the blankets and found his wife had no feet. Well, she lunged at him, but for the sake of this story... I won't say what the husband did next, but I can tell you it didn't end well for his wife slash witch. Anyways, back to my grandparents. So my grandpa arrived at the witch doctor's place. The witch doctor's greeting was a bit unusual, saying that he had wondered why it took them so long to get there, as he had predicted they would be coming. No time for pleasantries, my grandpa told him my grandma's situation, and the witch doctor immediately knew what was wrong and simply said, what ails your woman is something no medicine can cure. Your wife is cursed. Someone who wishes her death has cursed her. After hearing this, my grandfather broke down crying and hugged his now limp and near lifeless wife. The witch doctor said, Her fate will be decided tonight. The person who cursed her will come for her tonight. I will face him in battle. If by the time the first rays of sunlight shine through the window, I do not return, then your wife and I will die. If I am successful, you will see me come back, then all will be well. But remember this, do not touch me, do not talk to me. Simply take your wife and she will live. My grandpa wanted a few more answers, like who would do such a thing to his wife. The witch doctor simply said, Many can hate, but only some can hate so much that they'd perform a curse so evil as what your wife is currently suffering from. Several hours passed. Darkness came, and my grandma was in very bad shape. She was very near death. It was around 3 a.m. when the witch doctor got up and said, It is time. I will leave, but under no circumstance whatsoever, no matter what you hear, do not open the door or look out the windows. He slowly walked out and closed the door behind him. My grandpa said everything was eerily quiet. This was obviously a rural area, and at night one would usually hear owls or other insects or creatures of the night making their calls or rustling in the foliage or something. But my grandfather said it was so quiet he could hear his own heartbeat, which was pounding out of his chest, and the occasional crackle from the fire in the fire pit. Then he started to hear growls coming from just outside the hut. Whatever it was, it sounded big and angry. He then described what he heard as the sounds of two beasts barking and growling at each other, the sound of hard-hitting punches, and the snapping of tree branches, and a muffled cracking sound, which he said he'd imagined was bones being snapped forcefully. He said the noises became so loud that it shook the little wooden hut. He began to pray, and he simply kept praying. Eventually, he noticed that the noises had stopped. The door to the hut opened slowly, and in walked the witch doctor, with his clothes completely shredded. He was bleeding from deep gashes and even chunks missing. He, he slowly made his way to his cot, and he collapsed onto it. My grandpa got up, closed the door to the hut, took one step towards the witch doctor, and then he remembered what he had been told. So he heeded the man's advice waited for the first rays of light to come in through the window, and he picked up his wife, my grandma, and carried her back home. He mentioned that as he stepped outside, he felt a great sense of relief, as if a huge weight had been lifted off his shoulders. He also described seeing the area around the cottage as looking like a battleground, branches and small trees broken everywhere, blood and what looked like the remains of a huge black animal that may have resembled a dog at one point. The change to my grandma wasn't immediate. 
but within a few hours of arriving home, she was awake and feeling much better. Whatever curse had been placed on her was clearly over. My grandpa thanked the witch doctor every chance that he could for saving his wife's life and removing the curse. It was only a few more years before my dad was born, and, well, the rest, as they say, is history. Rest in peace, Grandpa. So for story two, this is from the perspective of a woman who has definitely suffered trauma in her life, some real and some ethereal. This story does point to some mysterious happenings in her life, leaving her with more questions than answers. I'm not a great storyteller, but I'll try. Everything I'm saying is 100% true, and I don't take the subject lightly. As a child in elementary school, I always remembered my mom playing with the dark arts or witchcraft. She was always trying to get even with someone or trying to conjure spells to get money. And considering that we were always poor, it must have never really worked. Or maybe we had money, but it just all went to her drug habit. She was not a great mom, and growing up with her was very painful for me and my sisters. She was always very abusive toward me. I'm not talking about how kids complain today that their parents took their phone away. I mean, like, she would throw me to the floor and, and stomp on me until I would lose my breath, hitting me with drop cords. My mom practiced Wicca with a lady from Morganton, North Carolina. My sisters and I spent many nights sitting in the car at graveyards while my mom went and burnt her candles and did whatever else she did. Moving forward in the timeline now to when I was 20 years old, my mom was no longer a part of my life and had not been for many years. I'm a hard worker. I never did any drugs as a kid. I didn't mess around with witchcraft when I was younger. And after a lot of hard work, I was able to buy a piece of land and build a very small two-bedroom, two-bath home for me and my daughter. Well, it wasn't too long after moving in that we started having some insane experiences. Once I was picked up and dropped down on a table by some entity. The doorbell would ring and no one would be there when I answered. On two separate occasions, I felt myself levitate up off the bed and I floated through the house, and then I felt a suction that pulled me back into my body. On other occasions, I felt someone or something sitting on my bed. When I turned the light on, there was nobody there. Kids would be visiting, and they would come running through the house crying that an old man was after them. There weren't any old men in my house. My dogs would growl at nothing that I could see. And then I started to change. I became involved in drugs, mostly pain pills and cocaine. This was so not me. I had always been afraid of drugs because I had seen what they had done to my family members, especially my mother. Then I just stayed in bed. I didn't want to go to work. I didn't want to go anywhere. Then I started hanging blankets over my windows because I wanted it as dark as I could get it. And I didn't want to be around anyone. I just wanted to sleep and even started playing in the dark arts for just a very short time. So, to no one's surprise, as I continued to sink deeper and deeper, I eventually lost my home. Now let's fast forward another 20 years. I've struggled ever since with addiction and constantly feeling like there's something weighing me down. God knows what would have happened if it hadn't been for my children. I don't know how to explain it. I just feel like... Something heavy has weighed me down since my 20s. So, really, this isn't a story of one particular event. It's probably more a question of, am I possessed by something? Or being followed? I've talked to some people, but these people will look at you like you've lost your freaking mind if you try to tell them that your whole life has been plagued by something dark. There are so many things that I have not brought up in this little bitty message to you. I don't even know if you think it's worthy of your post, but if you decide to post it, it would be nice if maybe someone could maybe suggest something that I could do. And you know, 
Maybe it's not anything spiritual or demonic at all. Maybe, maybe I'm just looking for something to blame my crappy life on. Who knows, but any suggestions would be great. I need to say that I only messed with witchcraft in my early 20s for a few months. And then I felt so guilty about it that I stopped. So it's not like I'm still doing that. Anyway, I truly would love some answers. So, SBT viewers and listeners, what do you think? Let her know in the comments below what your ideas of what may be going on in her life at this point and what may have caused a lot of the dark things to happen for the past 20 or so years. And keep in mind that this is a supportive community, right? There are many reasons why people watch our videos and submit their own stories. So be kind and be helpful if you can. And if you have a story that you'd like to share with us of a strange, unusual, paranormal event that happened to you, we'd love to hear it. Send it to us in an email at strangebuttruestories2 at gmail.com. And of course, do the subscribe thing and the notifications thing if you haven't done that already. Thanks a bunch to those who have. And thanks for watching this video. I'm Steve White. Until next time.